Kids on fire, come on up. Ooh, we have a crew. Hi, Barry. Yeah, Barry's back. Yeah, you have to talk loud. So do you all know what a glow is? Yes. You do? Yes. What's a glow? It's like a light that you can see without sun. A light that you can see without sun. So I'm, I've got one on my phone here. Let me see. Um, so am I glowing? It's a light. Am I glowing? No. Not so much? But you are wearing green. Oh, yeah, I can make you glow a little bit. You yeah. can make me glow, though. See, yeah. I bet yeah. I could. See, I, I want to teach you a word this morning. It's off the word glow. It's a Bible word that we don't use a lot because most of the things we talk about aren't good enough to qualify for this word. It's glory. 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 And that's glory. what the angel said about the birth of Jesus. Glory to God in the highest. Like, and the glow didn't just cover one person. Like, it covered the whole group. When they say there he is in his glory. So that's glow what is they not do. There, yeah. Glow is not very like, bright, 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 but it's like, kind of bright. Glow is not very bright, bright, bright. No, it's very, very bright, bright, bright. The kind of glow we're talking about is the glory of the Lord. And so when there was a pillar of fire and the glory of the Lord went into the tabernacle, it was way brighter than the sun. Yeah. So it's something you'll want to watch because it comes up all through the Bible. So remember the glow, okay? All right, one, two, three, four, five. Four piece. Four piece. Four piece. Imagine that. Good morning. I hope you are prepared for something unusual because when you start reading a familiar passage and you think you've read it before, you're not prepared. So prepare to see something that you have not seen before. As I was trying to explain to the kids this morning, glory is probably not a word we're using a lot in our everyday life. Most of the stuff that we're around on an everyday basis doesn't qualify for glorious. Uh, amazing sometimes, no doubt, beautiful. Unless it's God's handiwork, there's just not as much glory in the world as there should be, is there? The passage that we'll be uh, looking at this morning is Luke chapter 2, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on the shepherds as opposed to the actual birth account, though we'll dip back and notice some details that are obvious as we, as we look here. But in Luke uh, chapter 2, beginning in verse 8, we're told in the same region, of course, where Jesus had been born, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields, and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. Now, I want to focus on that phrase, the glory of the Lord shone around them. Um, I don't know what you could see out of my flashlight, but it doesn't qualify <laughs> And you might be able to get a little bright spot on part of a face with some, some little light like that. We even have what's called glow sticks. Well, they glow inside themselves. This is glory that does not simply come from an angel being bright, which is often the case, but the glory of the Lord that shone around them, and the them would mean more like the whole campsite. And so they thought it was dark, and there's this stranger there, and there's light. And the light comes from the glory of the Lord. Glory is something that appears when God is present. 
There's always a figure of brightness or light or fire is used to describe the presence of God when He uh, shows Himself on the earth. But the thing that that presence always indicates, as this story screams, God is about to do something. Now, Jesus has been born. God's already done something, but nobody knows it. Remember, there was not even any room in the inn. So the, the inn did not know. They're out where the manger is. They're out with the animals. And God wants to make an announcement and so he makes the announcement in the countryside, out in the field. He's about to do something that's going to last for all of time and beyond. And that glory is announcing what God is about to do. Now I told the kids this morning, and this, with our recent reading, this, this is really kind of stark. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle and the temple, but you remember that Ezekiel spoke of the glory leaving Jerusalem. And we do not have an account of the glory back again until this day. Not saying God wasn't active, not saying God wasn't present, but God was utterly silent for 400 years. And suddenly, there is glory again, and it's in Bethlehem where some of the worst and best things have occurred from Rachel's death at Benjamin's birth to Ruth to David and the glory surrounding Bethlehem to the point that Micah the prophet says that's where we will see the Messiah born. The glory is present to announce it. There was a passage uh, back in Matthew and this is, this is not the birth account. Matthew 4 after Jesus is baptized and tempted, we're told that the people of Zebulun and Naphtali, which is the region of the Decapolis, the ten cities, the, the area where the Gentiles were, it says the people, this is an Old Testament quote, the people who were sitting in darkness saw a great light. Those who were sitting in the land and the shadow of death upon them a light dawned. I find that passage quite prophetic. If we are not in a land of the shadow of death, I don't know what else would be true. All around us, what you see is confusion and division and hatred and spite and angry words and threats. The shadow of death is in our land as we sit this morning. And we are here to announce the presence of the glory of the Lord. Hold that thought. Back to Luke 2. Uh, the rest of the passage through verse 11. But the angel, remember there's just one at this point. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy. Which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. For all the people. Now, Luke has tried to set the stage for this. We start the chapter with a Roman census. And some names of some politicians of their time. And so in Rome is this family who's quite Jewish who goes to their homestead, to their place of origin, the family role, if you will. And, and we get this very much Israel, people of God view. And then the shepherds are brought into the story as the outcasts. Now the shepherds are going to go testify as to what they've seen, which is a real unique anomaly because shepherds' testimony is not even welcome in court. But God went to people who could not testify in their land and gave them the role of telling the good news to all the area of Bethlehem and beyond. All the people are already in the story. And Luke is going to say that over and over in his gospel, and he's really going to say it in Acts. This is for everybody. Now, 
I, I, I want to pause here. And by the way, I meant to say, first off, this is not one of those sermons that has three points, okay? There's one point. So just, just kind of follow with me. Look at this one thing from all these angles. When we say all the people, there's a, there's a realization here that is kind of counter to what religious people talk about around us today. There's a lot of talk about what God does personally for you. Now, I don't want to take anything away from what God does personally. I mean, when I feel forgiveness, it's my sin that I need forgiving, and I I don't really think about your sin that needs forgiving. I've got enough of my own. There is a personal part of this. But when we think about the glory of God, you know, if the glory of God tried to reside in this little frame, oh, that would just be a disaster. So, the glory of God is for all the people. And it's way beyond personally you that needs the glory of God. The effect will reach you, but the glory shines around all. And the message is for all. And that's what Luke is trying to say. Well, the other phrase, do not be afraid. Fear not, the King James says. Fear not. Four times now in the birth accounts, someone has had to be told not to be afraid. Zacharias, John's father, don't be afraid, Zacharias. Mary, Jesus' mother, fear not, Mary. You know, you're pregnant, you're not married, we get it. Don't worry about what's happening in your body. God's got it. And Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She's she's great. Don't be afraid. And now the shepherds, fear not. There's an angel in your camp in the dark, and yet it's not dark anymore. Anyone else should be afraid, right? I mean, this is a natural response to something unnatural. It's dark. And how is this happening? That the glory of the Lord is shining. Don't be afraid. Our world has 20 reasons for you to be afraid this morning. You can spend all your time counting them, trying to get details on whether you should be afraid or not, worrying about them. You can spend a lot of time wasted. As God says, I'm doing something that overshines all of that and causes shadows in these other things that you're worrying about. Maybe look somewhere else. The final thing I'd like to say, and I want to go back. No, skip that one. (laughs) The last thing I want to say about do not be afraid is, the message is good news that's coming. Now again, the event has occurred. The, The reason for the good news is the birth, and Jesus is here. The problem is no one knows it. And so news travels, sometimes we say, like wildfire. We've seen some of that recently. Wildfire moves from one place to another. The news travels from one place to another. It's it's covering all of the places where it needs to go. The glory of the Lord is being announced. Something is about to happen, and that something is not simply a birth. It is everything that that birth means to the entire world. And that's what's coming. Great joy, he says, will follow the good news. Now, I love having joy. Sometimes I sit and I think about all the things I am grateful for. And that brings joy to me. But rarely can I find joy without information. You know, your, your list of things you're grateful for. The things that God has done. The ways that God has blessed you. Information precedes joy. And if you have what has happened in mind, then your heart can respond in joy, as these shepherds would do. But in the middle of these phrases is a curious word, again, that we don't use much. Behold. <laughs> Behold. We need a focus. What the angel brings in problems, you sort of get to the place where you feel like you've covered all the bases and then, and then you can stop and, and maybe think about some rest. Of course, someone has to keep watch. There were shepherds 
watching the flock. Somebody had to stay awake. That's how their job went. But behold, is the angel saying, stop everything else because I have good news of great joy. This news is breaking news. This news overshadows everything else that has or will happen. You need to get it. We need to focus on the good news. The glory of the Lord shone around them. I, I want to finally say about that. The glory shines whether you see it or not. I mean, what we don't realize is God told some shepherds out in a field. There were a lot of people. There were a lot of people that would love to have had this news. There were a few, a handful that got it. And if someone had been outside looking, I don't know, should they have seen maybe that glory and that glow over there? Out of town? Yeah. I don't know. But, but God, God insisted that these shepherds find out and he knew what would then happen. They would have to take it to other people. Folks, what I'm saying is, behold, we need to focus, we need to stop, we need to realize that the glory is available and around us. But it's available and it's around us whether we see it or not. You know what, what pains me about what has happened to our, even our congregation over the last month? We sat here in a larger group, in a larger fellowship, rippling to more places, and we're struggling even to find 60 people willing to be here. Less than half of what we've had. And there is a consequence of that. Is every soul that used to tune in, were they tuning in a few moments ago? We don't even know. We don't even know. The glory happens whether you know it or not. The Lord speaks whether we hear it or not. Whether we're paying attention or not. That's the part. That's what the behold is for for us. Back to Luke 2 one more time. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Three things shepherds are not looking for at night, confidently. Suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. By the way, that's a name of God. God in the highest, God most high. Not lots and lots of glory, which is what we would think of in English. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. Glory to God. <laughs> Something that hadn't occurred to me as I read this story this time. Did the angels know Jesus was going to be born? I mean, yeah, they knew he was going to be born. Did they know today is the day? Yeah, we, we, think, we think being in heaven means everybody's equally smart and everybody's equally glorious. No, not really. <laughs> we still got God in the highest. I don't know what they knew or didn't know. But once they saw, there was no containing the praise. Boom! And the skies are filled with the angelic host, and that's the word army. You know, sea of people, sea of angels, skies filled, and they're glorifying God because you cannot contain that kind of praise. It can't be done. This is going to be a sign for you. You're going to find this baby. He's going to be wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Shepherds knew about that. I think it was last year we, we talked about this some. If these were shepherds near Bethlehem, that close to Jerusalem, they were very likely shepherds who were trying to produce lambs that would be sacrificed. 
And a lamb could only be sacrificed if it was without blemish. And to walk a lamb for eight miles or 80 miles, which is how far it would be to Nazareth from Bethlehem, lambs just have a way of getting tangled up in stuff. And they would wrap them in cloth so that they could get them without blemish. The shepherds knew they were going to find the Lamb of God in a manger, and it would be wrapped in cloth so that he was without blemish. That's your sign, and that's what caused the praise. You know, the heavenly host was there. (laughs) <laughs> Once again, let me, let me ask you, where were the angels before everybody could see them? Same place. <laughs> I mean, you know, what was that passage in the Old Testament? Lord, open his eyes. He could just see those that are with us or more than those that are with them. They were there. And I ask you today, what are we missing? What are we missing out on because we're walking around with our head down or in our phone or whatever we're doing? Or we're listening to something else instead of to the words of God. What are we missing? The heavenly host is there. God's glory is around us. What are we missing? And secondly, we are surrounded by that glory. When we're just going about our work, which is what the shepherds were doing. I mean, they were just trying to get things quiet at night. They were just going about their work, and they were surrounded by the glory of the Lord and the hosts of the Lord. And then amazingly, though the angel does not say, now get up and go into town and tell people. Didn't mention it. The shepherds looked at each other and said, huh, What was that? Did you see that? You know, what were they saying? Well, let's go see what we've been told about. It's pretty clear we were told. So maybe we should go look. And the the word is actually they had to search. I mean, you had to find a baby in a manger in cloths. That's not just going to be everywhere. And they go and they see... And then as they go back, the last verse of the chapter says they can't stop talking about what they've seen. From the glory of the Lord to the angels of the Lord to the hosts of heaven to the child in a manger. And they testify and they glorify God. You see, that's the proper response. When God does something that we offer it back and say, thank you, God. God be praised. God, you are wonderful. Thank you for doing what you have done for me, personally and all of us together. You know, in our class this morning, this is, this is our last thought. In our class this morning, we were talking about these signs that follow those who believe. And David was handling that passage and talking about the things that were described at the end of Mark or done in the book of Acts. You know, The shepherds were told, look for signs. And and civilization was told at the writing of Mark, look for these signs because believers are going to exhibit these signs. But, But the one that I remember that Jesus said is by this, everyone will know you are my disciples. Do you know the this? If you love one another. You know, if you see the heavenly host this evening or not, if we pray and someone is healed or not, if we love one another, that will be so striking in a world that doesn't have a clue what that even looks like anymore. If we love one another, people will know. And it will be a sign of God's presence among us. And that is what we need most of all.
I want to invite us in these next four weeks to behold His glory. One of the outcomes is glory. And we'll look at three others. Because it's all around us. Well, thanks for surviving the outage and all of the other things and coming back, you know, getting the last half of those words. If there's a way in which your December needs to be different from the rest of this year, it's a great day. Because the glory of the Lord is present, available, and He loves. And He set you in a room of people who love you. And he wants life to be better. Will you find his glory today? If we can help come while we stand and sing.